Hey YouTube, John here again. Another video on HDR, on my take on HDR and how I do HDR. Um, I've got my 50D set up here. Unfortunately I can't use my tripod because my tripod's got my video camera on it now. So I apologise for that. But it is steady on there. And I've also got a cable release which is quite important to when doing HDR. Now, I'm using my Tamron 17-50 to lens with VC turned off, that's image stabilisation, turned off. I, what you're seeing now is a bit of what I'm going to capture, but I'm going to be shooting, this focal length is 50mm, I'm recording at 50mm. I'm going to be shooting the shot at 17 so it's going to capture a much broader dynamic range, but unfortunately I've got two 17mm lenses, so there you go. Now, camera settings, I'm not, I'm assuming you know how to use your camera and stuff like that, so my camera settings are f16, why you, have, why you ask f16 is because I know that that lens is at its prime at f16, at f32, 22, it's not as clear, f16 is really sharp, so that's why I've chose that aperture. Now, shutter speed I can't tell you yet, because I don't know. Um, I'm going to shoot it in AV, so I'm going to do a centred exposure, two under and two over. Now the video camera should be showing you that behind me, there's a, look, the sun's beaming on the lawn. There is a fence to the side of the lawn, what you can't see, but you will do in the pictures when I show you on the computer. There's a dark fence, so there's plenty of shadows and highlights in this shot that we're going to shoot. So I'm going to shoot it in AV, two under, two over. Now. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to get me what I want. I'll take the shots, I'll have a look. If my shadows still look slightly underexposed, I might take an extra shot for the shadows on top. That's why it's vital to have your tripod and have your camera locked solid. So if you want to do an extra shot on top of your 2 under, 2 over, you usually find out 2 under is fine, unless you've really got something really bright in the scene. But 2 over sometimes might not be enough. Now if you look behind me here in the shed there's some bikes, now that's pretty dark in there. I'm going to also try to take an, an additional shot to, to lift up a bit of detail in those bikes. Um, I'm not going to show you me taking the shots because I don't think there's no need. Um, I'm going to explain to you how I've set it up. So the camera's F16, I'm going to do two underexposed, two shots overexposed. If I do a third one I'll tell you that on the computer or something like that. I will also show you the shots on the computer. Um, focus, that's quite important. Focus, when you're, if you've got, I don't know, when you look through your viewfinder, you need to assess, you want to be focusing about 30%, 30, 35, well 30 to 40% in to your shot. A lot of people will just maybe photograph something and focus on that thing but you've got to remember that you've got two times the depth of field at the back than you have the front so in all fairness you want to be focusing about 30 percent into your scene so look through your viewfinder look for your furthest thing away look for your nearest thing to you and focus about 30 to 40 percent in then you can recompose and then turn your auto focus off you don't want to focus again then you don't want your camera got in high speed continuous focusing different times, just focus once, lock it off, set it all up, then put your camera into high speed continuous because you want it to take the three shots as fast as possible. Um, you can take more than three shots, I'm just giving you a basic intro into HDR photos. So lock all your camera off, take your focus, check you in high speed continuous. On a Canon, make sure that you haven't got highlight tonal priority on because that's trying to hold detail in the highlights and it's going to be working against you. Also check that you haven't got auto lighting optimizer on in a Canon, disable it. In a Nikon, disable it is active delighting, turn it off because you don't want, basically what that's going to do when you take a shot that's underexposed, it's going to automatically lift the shadows on it, which is not what you want it to do. You're going to create an eye dynamic range picture, which is going to do, you're going to do that yourself so you'll have a much better picture afterwards. Now, you might ask yourself, why do you want to do an eye dynamic range picture? We can take a raw file, one shot, and probably put it on the PC and dodge and burn and, and drop the sky down, lift the shadows. Yeah, you can do all that, but you're not going to get nowhere near as good a end result as doing an HDR. 
and you can do HDR to the extreme or you can just more or less blend the exposures together to get a good dynamic range and then you'll find out when you sharpen that picture that you'll introduce a lot less noise in the shadows and stuff you'll be able to sharpen it a lot more because basically you captured a lot more detail when you captured the shot now I'm not really a big fan of HDR to be honest I don't do it a lot but sometimes I do like to do it and I have a bit of fun doing it right I'm going to take my shots now and I'll speak to you again on the PC hi and here we are for the second part now we're at the computer I ended up taking three shots one two and three now I if you look we did one under and one over which is this one we've got normal no hang on let me just get this right we've got one under we've got one over and three over yeah now the reason why I did it this way instead of having one two under and one two over was one under was plenty nothing's blown out there there's detail everywhere so I didn't basically need to underexpose anymore the only reason for underexposing is to get any highlights that are blown out all detail there and as you can see there's none lost now when you go to the two over you can see that in the shed and the shadows they're still a little bit dark if we just look around here and around here the where this board is so we're just gonna go now if we come here you can see there's lots of detail now in this part here we've got detail around the back here and around the back near this wood so that's where we finished up um, you could have done five shots but I think three is enough for this tutorial so if I select all three and go to tools Photoshop and it should be merged to HDR Pro profile if you actually have a look when that's doing that I'm going to just move that out of the way if you look this is the near part of when I was talking about the focus if we look here then I may be classing this tree here or maybe these trees here as my place so place to focus so I'm using this to guess where to focus now I could have easily focused on the shed but like I've said to you that's nearly near this tree so I ended up focusing somewhere about here on this pole that's where I focused then I recomposed instead of just letting the camera choose to focus somewhere here because that would have been at the back of my picture it wouldn't have been like 30% in so here we go where you can see straight off the bat without doing anything that we've got look at that I mean look at the dynamic range there already and that's from if we take this one off there you can see we've lost detail there, turn it back on. And that's absolutely superb out of the camera. Um, what we want to do is we'll have a bit of ghosting on these trees. So we want to click remove ghost. There you go, that's better. I don't know if you've seen that, but it sharpened up trees. Because what happens is, when the wind's blowing and your camera's taking pictures, the trees are in slightly different positions. If you remove ghosts, it's actually chose this picture here. It'll choose the trees, the branches from that one picture, instead of trying to merge. Like, I'll just try this one here, if you watch the... I should better select that now, and it should remove ghosts from that. There we've got one. So as you can do, you don't know if you've seen that branch move there. I'll see which one I like best. Hmm, I think that one was best. There, yeah, there you go, the trees all came clear there. So, this isn't really a tutorial on how to, this is Photoshop TS5. This isn't really a tutorial on, on, on how to use this software, but um, if you wanted to now, you could save this out as a 16-bit TIFF 
or a, or a JPEG, a six, uh, 16-bit, yeah, 16-bit or an 8-bit TIFF. Then you could open it up into Photoshop or Camera R or Lightroom and do your normal edit into it. So we could just, to make it a, a make-believe HDR, instead of messing around with it and really pushing things up, I'm just going to save it as is now at um, a 16-bit file. And then you can do your normal editing. You can, if you want, you can go and dodge and burn a little bit. You can do what you want. But you've got, if you look at that now, you've got a perfectly exposed image. I mean, them shadows in that shed was really, 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 really dark. There was like a huge stop difference between the lawn, which had the sun beating down on it, and inside the shed. And if you look, I mean, this here was completely... Well, you've seen it anyway, didn't you? I mean, look at that. It doesn't even look false. You could leave that like that. It doesn't even look false. It just looks nice, like you've got a good exposure. Always try auto. I know you're probably going to laugh, but sometimes it works wonders. And then others. Oh. Yeah, why not? Okay. And there you go. And that's just a quick, I mean, if we even, if we even come in to the bikes here, look at that, in a really dark shed, by doing an HD, wants a bit of sharpening on it now, obviously, because it's not no sharpening at all, because the raw file, there are three raw files, but if you look, we've got detail everywhere, and if we come up to the trees here, which were blowing, that remove ghost feature did a fantastic job. Now, if we want to, we could just maybe pull back a little bit, filter, sharpen, and sharpen that. Yeah, one pixel. We'll oh, we'll give it seventy-five. Seems it's three raw files. Let's just go in. We should still be nice and clean. Yeah, you see, we will give that a nice good sharpen now, and the no noise anywhere. I can't see any noise, even at one hundred. Let's go to two hundred. Mm, you can see a little bit at two hundred. But nothing. That's 25. And there you go. That's my take on a real looking... I mean, to be fair, you, you can tell it's an HDR. Anybody would probably know it was an HDR because you just won't capture that dynamic range without it being an HDR. But it's a natural looking picture and I hope that helps everyone in taking HDRs. You can use more than three pictures. In this scene, I didn't see any reason why. Um, like I say, this is still a 16-bit image now. It's uh, 16 bits. If I really wanted to, I could I could save it out as, a, like I say, a 16-bit TIFF and treat it as a RAW file then. Go in. I could even lift the shadows up more if I wanted to by using the fill light. I could do it like Or I could... Let me just do a quick... We'll do a dodge. On the mid tones, and we'll just go up to twenty percent, and we can even do this if we really want. Let's choose the shadows actually, because now if you look Command Z or Command Z, as somebody once pulled out, you could even bring up the shadows a bit, a bit more. Yeah, look at them shadows coming up now, and you are The thing of it is, there's no need to do that anyway, but. Off, they're fine as they are. The thing of it is, when you get, when you do a shot like this, and you get three good images with good exposures for the shadows. Basically, when I were exposing for this, I wanted an exposure for the grass and the sky. I wanted an exposure for the shadows, and I wanted an exposure for the midtones. If you can do it in three shots, there's no need in taking five. Is the do you know what I mean? It's just more processing power needed later on. But that's the idea. Take, a, take maybe one, two, under, two over. You can set your camera to do it automatically. Review them. Look at them. If you if something's blown out at two under still, that means you need to go further under. If you've got a good steady tripod, sometimes you can put it in manual and manually take another one under. Or take it again and go three under, three over. In this case, my camera only does... It only does three three pictures at once. So I had it going two under and two over. But basically I didn't have no shadow I didn't have enough detail here and around here. So I 
used the wheel on the back of my camera so it only ended up it still took three pictures but it went one under because one under was fine well, I looked at the screen and there was no blowout at one under exposed so I didn't really need to do two under and it did three over instead of two over and that's how I got these three raw files well thank you very much for watching hope you enjoy please give a thumbs up and subscribe cheers